It's Tuesday, June the 4th, almost said May, 2013, live from Pickens, South Carolina, and Wesleyan Headquarters in Indianapolis, Indiana. It is the Techology Show. I'm Matthew T.G. My son is a kindergarten graduate. I'm Heath Mulligan. And I'm Tony Casey, as Matthew said, all the way from headquarters in Indianapolis, South, uh, South Carolina. How about, <laughs> How about Indiana? Uh, welcome to the Techology Show, a weekly podcast featuring technology, theology, and everything in between. This is episode 205. Yay. Hey, we've got uh, two sets of theologian uh, gift cards. No, uh, two sets straight from Zondervan. We want to thank them. You can win. These things are awesome. The more I look at them, the more intrigued I am by them. Ooh, I you... made a boo boo. I, I put three on the giveaway. Oops. It is three. It is, it is three. three. Was, okay. Was, Shoot. Was, All right. Three, three sets. is better than two. So <laughs> if you go to the technology show.com slash giveaway, you can enter as often as you like. As often as you like. You want to enter a million times, you can win. One of these three uh, theologian trading cards. So make sure you do that. Yeah, and thanks to Zondervan for doing that for yes, us. Yes, awesome. Yes, very much. And so it looks a little lonely there in the office. Uh, my, my empty chair. Yeah, sadly I don't have a camera on it today. And I had no. to put one on me. You know, my, yeah. Hey, listen, my my greatest fear is you're going to set the bum the a bubble gum machine and put my face on it like we did for for Heath. But see, we wouldn't even have right to put we wouldn't even have to put your face on that because it's already got a smooth <laughs> surface. <laughs> so listen, uh, for our listeners, what we want to do today is uh, we're going to just really get nuts and bolts here. We want to talk about um, you know building decent. Uh, slide presentations increasingly in churches about everywhere you go now they have projectors and they're presenting some things and so Matthew let me say to you now I, I mean this this happened like in the last couple weeks um, I'm in a place and, and someone's given a PowerPoint presentation yeah. and like when they have a slide change there's a wagon wheel okay. and the next time it, letters come dancing oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> nice <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, so today today we need to try to crush all of that yes. and try to retrain ourselves yeah. in how we put together our presentations uh, for use on our screens. And we're going to try, I mean, this is going to be crazy because uh, we, we were originally going to do this episode was the week that our computer crashed and yeah, died. Yeah. And uh, it was going to be more or less we had talked about you interviewing me on this now we face some challenges because of <laughs> because of this location but we're gonna we're gonna try um to do this so where yeah. do you want to begin yeah so let, let's just start at the top so right now really kind of what we have those of us in the upper world there is keynote uh for those in a pc world um there uh, in PowerPoint, many people started out in PowerPoint. So let's talk about, in your opinion, I mean, what are the pros and the cons when you begin to talk about PowerPoint and Keynote? Well, let me go beyond that too and just say like there is, there are all kinds of, oh, there's open office, but then there's specific church worship software like ProPresenter. Okay. Uh, easy. There are so many ways right. to do this. But as we keep it simple, I think the majority of people uh, have had experience with PowerPoint. So I think that when you talk about pros and cons, that's the first pro for PowerPoint is that it is everywhere. Um, other than that, <laughs> I have a hard time uh, personally speaking to pros uh, on that. I mean, there are a lot of, of, of pro features in that. Like my wife has a uh, Jeopardy PowerPoint that has all kinds of macro scripts that she uses in the classroom that actually keeps scores and tallies and skips around. It is wow. nuts. It's yeah. absolutely nuts. Yeah. There's no reason that I need that on Sunday morning. That's way overkill. So there's things like that that I could never do you know, as easy in in PowerPoint, uh, but I am a keynote fan. Um, so, <laughs> and, and let me say this, Matthew. I mean, for me, you know that I was PowerPoint all the way. Um, even when I switched over to my Mac, I was PowerPoint. But uh, finally, about a year ago, I ventured into you know, dip my toe into the keynote world, yeah. and I have not gone back to PowerPoint. Yeah. 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 yeah, and talk and talk about why. I mean, give, well, give some reasons why. So, so here it is for me. It's it's two major reasons. The first is it has to do with the way that um, 
that you can play with text. So there's a thing called text kerning and the line spacing. Um, and what that is is the characters of your of your letters. Like let's say you had a word set up here. You can move your your letters closer and further apart. There may be a way to do this in PowerPoint. I bet there is. It's just not as easy and, and simple to find. And that I mean every week I'm doing that because yeah. as I as I do a series, um, I try to I try to make that series unique. Um, I'm kind of a series kind of preacher, so there are occasions when I preach one-off sermons. But uh, for the for the most part, I'm you know for a month, for two months, maybe even more, I'll be in the same thing. So I want right. a font that just kind of right. good that 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 is covering all of that. And sometimes I don't like the spacing on it, so that just comes in so handy uh, in line spacing. I don't know. Again, I have tried. I've worked with Ashley on this in at least in the Mac version of PowerPoint, you cannot do a, like you can only have a one point line spacing. I can't get down to like 0.8 or 0.7. Yeah. Uh, and there's times when I need to, I need to do that to get the, to get the lines of text a little closer. And do all yeah. kind of so that, that happens every week. But then aside from that, it's about media and the way you can work with media inside of PowerPoint. Uh, I'm sorry, inside of Keynote, it is far superior, in my opinion, to what you can do with PowerPoint. And I think that's been your experience too, Tony. I was just going to say, that's what hooked me in. The, the way that Keynote handles uh, videos is just way better, the way it embeds them. And so in PowerPoint, you know, someone might be listening to this podcast and they would say, oh, you can do that in, in PowerPoint. You can embed it. Yes, I have done that. It's not nearly as smooth. It's not nearly as easy. It's not nearly as flawless. It just handles and renders videos in the presentation. Yeah. Um, Heath, what do, you, do you use PowerPoint or Keynote or do you or something else? Uh, for a time, I was using uh, Keynote, but what I was doing since we were using at that time Easy Worship, and so I was saving, I was having to save everything as a picture and then turn it into the Easy Worship. Uh, now with Pro Presenter, um, I make the slides in Keynote, save them as pictures, and then. Um, and put them in the program. Okay. So I used to also do the same thing. I used to mm -hmm. also, and this brings me to a whole other issue. I used to also save pictures as images because I had right. the person in the back of the church running my presentation for right. me. And I had a paradigm shift when mm -hmm. we switched to our, we, we switched from a projection screen to televisions right. that had HDMI inputs. Yeah. And I made the investment, the $100 investment of buying an Apple TV right. that I hook into an HDMI switcher so that they can have the back computer in there or the Apple TV. And I have started running my own presentation from yeah. the front right off my laptop. That has changed the game for yeah. me. Yep. And Tony, you talk about that too. You preached uh, in my place. I had a Sunday off, a Sunday yep. away a couple of weeks ago. You, for the yep. first time, presented your own presentation. What were your thoughts? Yeah, here, here's the strength of that. You get that slide when you want it. And you know as well as I do is when you're preaching, there's a timing aspect. And there's some time when you say something, you want that slide to come up as you're saying it. Yeah. And there is something lost when someone else is running that for you. Also, at one point in the sermon, I wanted to go back to a slide to reiterate and, and show a picture again. I just, you know, two or three swipes of the iPad, I was right back to it, pointing right. out things on it. And then just quickly went back to where I was. And that... that it becomes more cumbersome when there's someone else in the process. Yes. And you could do that with ProPresenter. They have a they have a way to yeah, link I up. Have an, I have an app on my iPad, and so if I wanted to, okay. to do that, could do that. You and, need yeah. to start trying at least. I've never used ProPresenter yeah. in that Typ way. I would love to. I have typically, I mean, I'm still trying to find that good balance of of – just enough slides and not enough slides. There's, I think there's some weeks for me, especially if I'm, and I, and I don't want to jump ahead of our conversation, but some of the things, like there's sometimes if we're talking about historical things, like uh, we were talking about uh, the, the Jesus and the, and the coin in the Bible, and I wanted to show a picture of that coin, and so that was a week I had a lot of pictures because I was showing historical mm -hmm. things and so that was good and then there's some weeks that i don't want i just kind of want that one image that one thought yeah. up there the entire entire message so for me i'm still trying to find that that balance of 
just enough, not too much. I think the thing that happened with PowerPoint is when we first got it, we wanted, it was like this new shiny object. And I, I tried everything. And like every slide had four fonts coming in. No. It had a sound. It was doing the, the transition. Oh. And now, of course, we all know that that is, well, that is and sin. Listen, we're, and we're going to get to that because, I mean, I, and Matthew's dying right now. Like, yeah. oh, yeah. no, no. And we're going to get to that and why Matthew is, oh, no, yeah. on this kind of stuff. One of the comments um, in the chat room real quick. Talking about you know keynote and and PowerPoint is uh, Paul Tillman shares that the thing with PowerPoint is everybody has power even if you yes. have everybody has so PowerPoint this is, and so most people so know this how to is use true it. so here's what you do you yeah. again you have to build your presentation in Keynote right export it as images put those images back into Keynote export that as a PowerPoint so that all <laughs> your fonts stay the same all the layout stays the same. <laughs> Nothing changes, and then give that to whoever needed to have a PowerPoint. Because um, I'm telling you, like the, the way that you can design and customize, it is it is yeah. far superior to Keynote. And that's, I mean, I've, I've used both. Yeah. I've built presentations it's, out of both. I would be, you know, we were talking about this pre-show. We were talking about Scribner, which is was a download of the week. It would be great if you could take a program like that that has all of your research and everything. Uh, yeah. You can't do well, that. Anymore. I don't know what you're talking about, but you should build that and sell it. And yes. Okay, listen, let, let's, let's stay on task here. So begin to talk about Matthew. I mean, just some of the keys to building a good presentation slide. So what is someone trying to accomplish here? All right. So, uh, I mean, let's just start way back before you even put your hands on the computer. You need to know what you're presenting on. What is your aspect ratio and what is the resolution and what is the format of, of what you're using? Because you have to change depending yeah. on what it is. Mm -hmm. For us, we did have a projector bouncing light off a screen, which meant that there were things that I had to do differently. I, could, right. I needed to use dark backgrounds with really bright text so that everybody could see what was happening. Images, like if it was kind of dark, it was so difficult to see right. what was yeah. happening there. And so it took it took intentional work and effort. I mean, more work and effort. I had to think a lot when hey, you were building for that. Matthew, talk about that one. You built one slide. It was beautiful. And it wasn't until the second slide. Uh, week that you turned around and saw what we were seeing and realizing it wasn't working yeah, for us. Yeah, so so I had built this thing. I was talking about I was doing a series on the church and why the church is important, why it's uh, shouldn't you know why why <laughs> it was about a three or four week thing. Right. Like I said, I preach in series, and so I I think I was more than two weeks in. I think I was down to the last week of this thing, uh, the the next to the last one, and I turned around and saw, <laughs> oh my goodness, this whole image was fading right into the background. You couldn't see a thing that was going on. And of course, <laughs> Tony's sitting there in the church the whole time never bothers to say anything yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't know it was supposed to be there. <laughs> That's funny. But but yeah when 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 I had it on my on my laptop screen I could see everything fine. Right. And if I went back and put it right now on our flat screen televisions that are up in right. the church, I'd see it fine. But on the media that I was using it wasn't working. So before you ever before you ever build anything you need to know what the things are that you're using, yeah. what kind of aspect ratio, and what the resolution is so that you can build appropriately. Because if you build something in a 4 by 3 aspect ratio and come to find out you're presenting on, on 16 by 9, uh, it's just not yeah. going to work out very yeah. nice at all. It's yeah. really not. Um, so, so that's the first thing. Um, the, the second thing is <laughs> that I wrote in my own notes, like I, I put together a lot of notes for this, is that you've got to keep your message simple. Um, you really have to boil stuff down. You don't put everything right. up on this. I mean, do you remember the days of, well, no, I don't know. You probably didn't, you probably never had a PowerPoint presentation in college. No. Me? No. No, I'm talking, yeah, as students, no. I was thinking more of Heath. Like, no. that was, this is all before you did. We had overhead projectors. I remember how horrible sitting through some of those, as it's just bullet point after yeah. bullet point of yeah. somebody reading yeah. Everything that's on their piece of paper is coming up there, and it's just thing after thing after thing, and tons of text and all this stuff, and you don't know what's going on. Yeah. You really got to boil it down and keep it simple. I've got some examples that we'll run yeah. through after a little bit. Let, let me let me get through a couple more okay. notes, and then I'll, I'll highlight those examples. And that uh, again, losing the bullet points is important. You never need to bullet point anything. Right. Uh, just like you shouldn't. I mean. <laughs> I guess I, can't, I guess I can't go that way. We have people who bring guns into the church. <laughs> <laughs> bullets, bullets have no place in the pulpit. Uh, let me put it that way. Um, 
use images to speak. Um, really be intentional about the imagery that you're using. Let them let them be your words uh, from time to time. Um, in fact, more often than not, I think a great image can speak more than a, right. a kind of text you'd put up there. Um, again, don't I be like just... Yeah, go ahead. I like what you say here, but use images wisely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, use images wisely. You got to know where you're getting them from. Uh, you again, you got to know what the what the um, resolution that you're using. If you take a, a little tiny image that looks really good, you know it about yeah. this postage stamp right. size, and you right. blow it up to uh, 1920 by 1080, you right. know, a 1080p screen, it's going to look horrific. Don't yeah. do it. I got an yeah. example for that yeah. in a minute. Yeah. Um, now, what about what don't, about putting scripture text on the screen? We talked about not putting a lot. All right. Words. So, so again, so that's it? that's a spot where you can stray away from these rules, I believe. Like if if again, and I don't know, this may just be me personally, but one of the things that I've been doing now for about uh, three quarters of a year mm -hmm. is that I'm trying to have my people read the scripture with me yeah. as we're going through it. Right. And to do that, I mean, I don't know what kind of translations everybody's bringing. So there mm -hmm. are. That, that is the exception to the rule. When it yeah, is a yeah. slide of scripture, um, yes, it is that. If you're going to do that, it's better to have 20 slides with the text nice and big where everybody can see it yeah. than try to jam everything onto something and make it difficult for everyone. Right. So it still takes intentionality and thought, but hey, um, go for it. Don't be distracting. Again, we talked about distractions. You, you yeah. just mentioned some transitions, things bouncing in. Yeah. Like, Let's back away from this and talk about a presentation that we saw recently, Tony. Yes, um, I was thinking the same yeah. thing. Uh, yeah. A, a very, I don't, again, it was a presentation software. Not exactly sure what it was. Very interesting. It was almost as if it was like this mind map that the, sl that, that the slides were like, it was this one big thing that some sort of camera frame was zooming in on different sections, yeah. and it would put it all together. Oh, yeah. You know oh, man. I can't remember the name of it, but it's an awesome software. It, well, it is. Yeah. But it's, it's so distracting. It is distracting. Because what's happens, what happened to me, and for you too, Tony, is we're sitting there watching this, and as this thing is panning around this image, yeah. all of a sudden you notice, okay, there's something over there. Now, what exactly is that? And, right. And your, your <laughs> mind isn't on what the speaker is trying to get to you. You're thinking about whatever that fuzzy little thing is. That, that's it. And then later on it gets to that. It's like, oh, okay, that's what that was. That's cool. I wonder how it's going to tie into this. And it was so, it's very yeah. distracting. Yeah. Being simple, there, there are... There's this guy, let me find his notes, I've got it here, um, uh, about Seth Godin. Um, mm -hmm. He has five rules for creating PowerPoints. He says, don't use transitions at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. I find that a half second dissolve or slow fade, not like mm -hmm. a not like blocks going, but just like a cross fade of one thing going into another, yeah. uh, that that's... That's my preferred thing, a, a yeah. half a second crossfade. Yeah. Um, but like transitions, all they're going to do is be distracting. You talked about the wagon yeah. wheel that you saw, Tony. Like all it's yeah. going to do is be like, oh, look, there's a wagon wheel. You've right. totally taken people yeah. out of out of your right. presentation onto right. the transition of that. I think as a speaker, we have to take into account the human mind because we, as, as pastors, we're trying to reach the human heart but you got to reach their mind as well. And you have to understand that from, you know, you, you might have people from 12 years old to 112, and you, you've you got to just understand that the mind can only comprehend so much. And I think what you said, using the images that, I mean, people see those word pictures. Um, I think it's so, I think this whole topic is so important because the message we're sharing is the most important message in the history of the universe. Yeah, let me jump in here. And, and the point, you know, Matthew and I saw this one presentation, and here's the point. For us, what became the fascination in the message were the transitions, not the points of the message. Right, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that's the danger. Right. So let's go through some examples and see All some right. of those. So Tony, um, I've sent you one thing, but I'm actually going to be looking at something before we get to that, something That's that you fine. don't have there. Uh, but I did a series in Genesis that I'll be picking up again at the beginning of next year. And uh, just, again... I don't have all my components that went into making this, but this is a series of about six different images. And again, it took work. I spent a whole day uh, making a slide um, 
to, to do this, to speak this thing <laughs> and putting all this together. It really was a lot of work. I mean, you see here, um, you see this light blue uh, kind of haze up there at the top where the where the world meets. Like all of those things are different layers. All this was yeah. done not in not in uh, Photoshop. I like to use a little Mac app called Pixelmator. It's a twenty dollar app that'll do just about everything Photoshop will, and I love it. Um, let me go on to the next one here, though. Let's see here. So again, as uh, the next uh, the next sermon in the series was about how we're created in the image of God, mm -hmm. um, using I mean this was the image that was there the whole time was this mirror. Uh, again, it was a little bit of work with, and mm -hmm. playing with PowerPoint to get the reflection of my words there. But even without that, I think that this image That's would really speak cool. a lot for what you're doing. Um, we talked about work and how we were designed to work. Yeah, and talked notice about with those. Now our viewers can see that, right? Yeah. Please? Yeah. Yeah, and notice how there's intentionality to for the picture to reflect the point. Yeah, the, the, no the, the overall point, the big point, is is what we were going for there. Um, let me get to this next one. This is the fall, and oh, uh, again, I do great. have I do have for this one the images that made the composition. So here we go, Heath. We've got uh, this hand. Um, I found a silhouette of this guy's hand. Uh, this image of a well looking up, and then it was a process of putting all three of those oh together to create to create the the image that worked with what was happening there. Um, Pre Prezi is the name of that software we were. Uh, Thank you, Paul, in the chat room. All right. Well, be cautious. It is cool, but be, yeah, be wise when you play with that. It is distracting. Yes. Uh, let's see what else. Um, this is the most current series. That I'm doing right now, I actually stole the name from um, Matt Leroy's church. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a series on the Apostles' Creed, and mm -hmm. they we're calling it Elemental. But other than that, the design of all of this, again, is just me working to put stuff together. Let's see here. I want to skip all that. Here's examples of these are points yeah. from the message that, that I was doing. Again, a general rule of thumb in your points, you should never have more than six words up on yeah. the screen at the same time. As we're dealing with words, you also shouldn't have more than three fonts in anything you're ever doing. Oh, if you yeah. put out a mailing, if you do anything yeah. like that, please don't use more than three fonts. Three fonts yeah. is the maximum. Yeah. You want to have like your regular font, some font that highlights something. Yeah. Uh, but even 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 three is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> really be smart about how you work with fonts. Right. Uh, and let's see. So there's, yeah, that's that. Now let me go to the one that you do have, Tony. So this is okay. the this is the presentation from this past Sunday, and you just saw you just saw Kim Jong Il or Kim Il Sung. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, we'll get to that in a second. All right. <laughs> um, okay, so Pastor Matthew's soapbox. That again is just something that that happened. And again, it was just sometimes I do this thing where I I talk about a topic that but, doesn't pertain to my message. Yeah. Yeah. Let, but, let me say. Let me interject here. So now you have conditioned the congregation, though. So when we see that come up. I mean, you know, you have you visually communicate to us in like a split second. Oh, here we go, man! He's got something. Yeah, yeah. Has nothing That's, to do with the message. He's just gonna go on a rant for yeah. us. And I've I've used this three times now. This this same image, and it's great. It's just become a thing where every mm -hmm. once in a while, if there's something off topic, but that I need to address, uh, that happens. So here's the scripture again. This break, breaks the rule of six words on the slide, but to have people read along with me, here's. The different things that we've covered so far, the right. different elements um, as we've worked through, as you can see, we're not quite halfway through the um, the the Apostles' Creed. We talked about Pilate last week, and again, this is just my simple. There's there's what's going to be up there. The majority of the time I'm right. talking, this right. slide that has the element PI with the word Pilate underneath it is going to be the thing that people are going to see. Um, again, yeah, used a little bit of the Apostles' Creed. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no, I, I was just going to say, and be sure to, I mean, slide 12, talk about what you did with that, because, I mean, that oh, was just I awesome, and numbers. everyone, almost everyone identified with this. I can't see the, the numbers, so give give me a hint. Oh, that, no, this about. is the one where you have the, one of these things, oh, not yes. like the other okay. video. Okay, and this is what I was going to, this, I was going to mention this, so this is intentional, this is intentionally strategic, what I have right here. Now, on Sunday morning, this plate is a video. Mm -hmm. I don't, I can't do it here because of the, the, the way I run the show and all that, I can't make it happen. But what we have here is an image of an old television. When you find an old video on YouTube, it's not going to be a real high-resolution video. This thing, Heath, is 360 
pixels right. is all that it is. Right. I've got to blow it up. It's going to look rough. If I make that thing full screen, yeah, it's, it's going to look horrific. Yeah, so what I've bad. done here is I've found this this picture of this old television. Yes. I've alphaed out the television area, and I've layered that picture on top of my video in Keynote so that when it plays, the video is playing in the little TV screen. So yeah. it, does, it, 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 it does this thing where it... It is what it is, but it's less distracting, in my opinion, mm -hmm. than if the thing was full screen and it was blocky right. and awful and yeah. rough. And so <laughs> was, I was, again, talking about how Pontius Pilate is mm -hmm. the one guy, like we're talking about Jesus, we're talking about the Holy Spirit, we're talking about all these holy things, and now here comes this pagan Roman guy, yeah. Pontius yeah. Pilate. One of these things is not like the other. And so, so here's one of the images that I use. Like, this is really hard, guys. Can you figure out exactly which one of these things is not like the other? I mean, it's tough, but right. Heath, can you get it? Which one is it? Which one's not the same as the others? Come on, Heath, you can do it. The W. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I had a couple other examples. Here's another one, you know, of the well, of the red hats and the silver like hat. Like um, What's bad is I still have that TV. Yeah. <laughs> well, again, it's just intentional strategy here. And uh, it's because that video file, that's the best quality video file I could find. It would have looked horrible for me to play it Jeez, full screen. Let me, let me bust in here that way. I wondered how you did that on the screen. Ah, you yes. that out. That, that is awesome. That is awesome, man. You I'm blowing your mind. You should have told him, I'm man. You're like a mind. magician revealing, oh, revealing yeah. your it tricks. Takes, it takes intentionality. You really have to strategize about this. And it wasn't until recently that, I, that this dawned on me. And it's a learning process for me. I didn't know all these things to begin with. Yeah. But, but I had this little tiny video. And it was just a few weeks ago of, of our gang of, uh, you know, uh, what were their names? Alfalfa and, and all of them. And it was yeah, about... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was from a few weeks ago. Uh, I had I used that as an illustration about the He-Man Woman Haters Club, and I thought, man, this is just going to look awful if I do that. How could I? How could I be creative in the way that I get this in front of people and yet not be distracting? And so I created that that television image and alpha out the alpha yeah. out the screen so that it would work. Hey, can, let me interject here too, Teach. I didn't know about the alpha tool until you showed it to me, and. Um, some of this stuff seems really complicated, but one investment I made, and it wasn't a whole lot. I want to say it was like five or ten dollars. I actually found uh, um, I went to the the app store, the the Mac app store, and I could buy for five dollars a tutorial for Keynote, and, yeah. and that was like the best five bucks I've spent in a long time. And they will walk you through these things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and it's important to, to do that, to learn these kinds of things. I mean, some of it you learn just by, by tinkering out the tools that are there, but some stuff you do have to have somebody say, hey, did you know yeah. you could do this, and here's yeah. how you do it. Um, it goes a long way. Uh, so, yeah, this is, this is a slide that I just keep on file now, this television screen, so that when I have a little cool. video uh, that I can't blow out to the full screen, mm -hmm. um, I put it in there. And that's, you could put it in a frame. You can do all kinds of stuff, but it's a video. And it's an old video that people used to watch on a television like this. Why not? So why not cool. be creative and just put it put it inside of that? Real real quick, I don't I don't want to get us off topic, but in the chat room, people are talking about certain fonts, in particularly Comic Sans. <laughs> that if you use Comic Sans, you can't go to heaven. So Matthew, here's the question: <laughs> You talked about <laughs> excuse me, no ahead. more than three fonts. Are there? Certain fonts or font styles that we should stay away from in, in oh, creating our presentation. I don't know. I've used I've used everything. Like this past uh, Christmas, we talked in a series. I'm a series guy. The series that I did was called Christmas Presents, but it was the presents P R E S E S C. Ah, see what he did there. Presents. Yes. And one of the fonts that I used was called Christmas on Crack. Oh dear. <laughs> it was just this wild, this wild thing. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think that I try to find something that, that, that speaks to, to what I'm right. doing, but I, I wouldn't, like, I didn't put the scripture up there. I had an alternate, I had an right. alternate, very clear font, and then the, 
if you look up the font Christmas on crack, it's right. just it's it's frilly. It's it's it looks kind of like Dr. Seuss and the who, how the Grinch right. stole Christmas. It, it's really crazy. And so like if you're gonna have multiple ones, which I needed mm-hmm. to do, that was like a, a title font that I'd only use for for major titles or, or major points. But then anything that I needed people to also participate in in reading or have some sort of clarity to it, I had a, a sub font. And I don't remember what the font was that I used. Um, now that we're talking about this, I want to dig it up and pull it out. But anyways, yeah, uh, let me I, just I tell you a, one, a resource. One I want to, Go ahead. One of the things I want to add here is, um, j- again, to underscore the intentionality of everything that you use in a presentation. Um, so, for instance, I don't know where you were going, Teach, but I would like for you to show the viewers the, the two slides of Stalin. And I'm going to tell you one of the powerful parts of your message this past Sunday is you, uh, and you can you can elaborate and give some commentary in a moment, but when, the, when you showed the second picture of Stalin and then talked about what they were trying to communicate and then the reality of what really happened after right, that picture. Let me see here. I'm going to skip ahead here a little bit. So, All right, so the context is we were talking about how the Roman Empire at the time of Christ was essentially, for the known world, it was a one-world government. I mean, it yeah. was a big deal. And world how, world it was a, how it was a personality cult. Uh, Pilate comes into Jerusalem and he's hanging the imperial banners and the the, the busts of of Caesar and it, this is anathema to the Jews. They're freaked out because, I mean, this is idol worship in their right. eyes. And so you know they're they're like we've got to stop this. This has got to this has got to quit. And so I use these images to, to help explain what a personality cult was. Was that Joseph uh, Stalin? He love to come across as this caring father figure for the right. people. And so you'd see images like this. This is a drawing of that. And then there were actual images that were taken. So here's a, a photograph that was taken. I cannot remember the name of the little girl now. But here's a photo that was taken with this little girl. You know, and doesn't he look fatherly and caring? After this picture was taken, that girl was sent to a labor camp. Mm. Um, and so in the reality of what was actually had, what the picture is trying to portray and what was actually happening was something completely different. Uh, Let's see, I also, I, again, as I talk about like a current day example of personality cults, Kim Il-sung, Kim Jong-il, uh, the fact that if you live in North Korea, you have to have a wall in your house that has these pictures hanging on it. Nothing else can hang on the wall except yeah. a picture of each of these guys. You've got to care for it and, and, and do all that. And so use those images for that. Then the final one, I, it's, a, it's a classic painting from the late 1700s. Uh, well, let's see, more scripture about Pilate. Let me skip ahead right here. And this uh, is where I parked for about the rest of yeah, the series yeah. was this was this image. And I, it's called, uh, oh, it's in Latin. I can remember, it, it's it's the question, who is this man, is the name yeah. of the English translation of this painting. Somebody look it up for me. I wish I could remember now. But it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. And it, it, it just kind of sat here for the rest of, of what we did because the question, as you see on this, uh, well, that was a picture of the pilot stone. But as you see on this next question, th- this next slide, this was the question we were trying to answer from that day. That pilot's question t- for Jesus is the same question that we all have to ask: Are you the king? Yeah. Are you the king? And how does that? How did that relate to pilot? And how do how do we ask these kinds of questions and do these kinds of things? But anyways, there it is. Uh, well, and something else Lewis. I've learned from you, Teach, please show the next slide there with C.S. Lewis. And I, I mean, I learned this from you, that when you have a quote, if you have a, a really good picture of the person giving the quote, put that person's picture up there. Yeah. And I, and I think it yeah. just does something, you know. Yeah, it does. Instead of me having to, like, use a tilde and say C.S. Lewis, uh, I can say C.S. Lewis, have this quote right here. And, yeah, yeah it, it just creates a point of connection for people uh, in that. Um uh, I don't know how to say this. Behold the man. Yes, yes, that's right. And the, the second word is homo. I know that because that's yeah, Eke that's a, homo. Yeah, yeah ek homo. Behold the man. There you go. Uh, thank you. Um, but that's that's about it as far as the examples that I have, except for one more. I was recently again at a spot where they did a presentation, and just to give you an example of poorly used images, this is a this is a picture of my. Oh, well, not that. Come on here. Let's get oh, away from that. that. Was my mug shot. This is a picture of my uh, great grandfather Orin, and this is how it wasn't this picture that was being used, but this is how it happened. The uh. the display device that they were using was projectors. It was mm-hmm. four by three aspect ratio, mm-hmm. and they'd taken a picture of somebody mm-hmm. and stretched it out to fill yeah. the whole screen. Uh, yeah. Made them look like 
uh, a munchkin or something like that. It's just, it's <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely wild. You've got to respect the images that you have. It was horrible. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. was dying in there seeing that. And even if, here's, here's what I came away from, Tony. I remember having this conversation with you after it was done. Even if people didn't know what they were seeing was like that, I can guarantee you they would appreciate this better. Here's here's a here's an alternate picture. Yes. Something like this. Yeah. Even if they couldn't put into words what the difference is between these two slides, right. I guarantee you if I showed you both of them, yeah. the majority of people would find that more appealing. Not Maybe not be able to express why they feel yeah. that way, but that that is better than yeah. stretching out an image and, and doing it. Please respect your images. See, I'm not a big fan. You know, we were at the graduation this morning. They were doing a little slideshow, and there were some of the pictures where they had uh, words. Uh, you know, it was like a question of what's yeah. going on in the picture. You couldn't hardly see them. And I, I'm not a big fan, and I'm guilty of doing this a lot, of having words on an image because it's so hard so many times to especially if it's a picture that you're wanting people to really notice, not like a worship background. But it's so hard to get the words where you can really be impacted by the words and the image. That's just my personal opinion. Well, I'm it, Typically, like the second one you showed, I prefer that over the first one just because it was hard to see the name. Oh, yeah. and, well, the let, and let me pile on here and Matthew and I were at the same place where this presentation was given and Matthew I, I, I understand you like some people there are people in my family who you know they wouldn't even they wouldn't quite know and they would agree with you oh yeah the second one looks better but the tragedy of that service is there were many people like me and you who wanted to stand up yeah. take a time out and say hey let me fix something on that slide presentation mm. real quick yeah. And it was it was a distraction to us. Oh, it was. And it was it was the whole service long. From the beginning to the yes. end. They started off with, with pictures of actual people and then it went to other images that again, when you talk about using your images to relate something, this was a themed service mm -hmm. and they were throwing pictures up on the screen, all stretched out, that didn't relate. It was it was about this is a <laughs> all right, it was a theme service that walked all the way through the Bible. So it should be easy to find images of these stories that you're talking about yeah. out of scripture. And when you're, t let's say that you're talking about, let's say that you're talking about the sin of, of Adam in the garden, and you've got a picture of Jesus healing somebody up on the screen, um, didn't relate, right. Right. was awful. I mean, just, yeah. just distracting and awful. And it would have been better to just blank out the screens, to hit the blank button and have nothing there than distract people with, Poop. Right. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you want to enhance the worship or enhance the sermon. You're not trying to detract from yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. So all right, now listen, time's getting away here. Right. I mean, I want us to get to some of these. Um, we have all kinds of other things on the list here and devices and things of that nature, yeah. like you have high powered remotes. Why don't you go through those real quick? Okay, so these are here are some resources for you, things that you can use to better yourself and as you present. I don't have images of these to put here for us today, but there are, uh, if you need to start running your own presentation. You need to do that. So yes. Because when you get to that point in the service where you're having to say to your person in the back, oh, go back, or come on, we right. need to get to the next slide, that's distracting Very again. You're distracting. taking people out of where they need to be, and you're putting them uh, in a completely different place. Yeah. We need to get away from that. Yeah. So a, a very, like the simplest way is you spend $50, and there are some high-powered infrared or Bluetooth or even right. Wi-Fi remotes. I will link you a few uh, in, the, in, in the show notes today after the yeah. show is over, uh, made by Logitech and other companies where you can – in PowerPoint, in Easy yeah. Worship, and anything, essentially what they do is the remote is the arrow keys on your keyboard, yeah. and you yeah. can run. E even if even if the person has to run the songs during the service, at some point you yeah. step in and you've got this thing. Practice it. Don't don't just go into a Sunday and do it without without trying first. But most uh, most projectors, I, I know when we were first getting into PowerPoint projectors, most projectors, if you've got the remote, it's automatically built. In as long as you're close enough to the projector to use it, you've I mean, got to tie your projector into your computer well, I mean, too. Through the USB, and yeah, stuff. USB. You got to have that, but other, but if you got that, yeah, it's, I have it's maybe iffy. and yeah. maybe I, and yeah, you, you could see if you could set that up. But this is, regardless of that, this would work right. if you had that or if you didn't. 
um, you could go in and, and use this remote to control your presentation. Uh, if you do live in an Apple world, um, an Apple TV, $100, Keynote is $20, and there is, if you had an iPad or an iPhone, there's a little app called Keynote Remote that's $2 or $3 uh, that lets you tie all those things together. Um, that's what I've been using and uh, seamless, man, a lot. Absolutely it is seamless. so great. And you can see the slide that's coming up next. You can see your notes. Mm -hmm. It is fantastic. Just absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, awesome. so, so that's those things. Let me talk about resources real quick um, for both, both design and, and thinking about how we communicate, but then also for uh, photos and for uh, fonts and stuff like that. So. Uh, less clutter, less noise. Go back and listen to our interview with Kim Meyer. Yeah. Get her book. Read that. Um, I'm a huge fan of Kim Meyer. She's really that. It was that book that really got me started yeah. down the road of really thinking about these things. Um, there's <laughs> there's a great website called um, Church Marketing. <laughs> church Marketing sucks. Yes. If you can't use that, they have an alternate URL that's Church Marketing stinks. Uh, yeah. And you can go there. It'll just forward you to if you can't type. You know, Church Marketing sucks. But yeah. they 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 give you resources they they oftentimes show what to do what not to do um they have a uh group on Flickr called the church marketing lab where if you're building uh imagery to use for a sermon series or something like that you can upload your images there and get feedback from other people saying hey this looks good or here's something you could do to change that or you know this really doesn't communicate well or whatever it is it's a great community to use for that if you're you know trying to get going on this kind of stuff um, and just another thing that I follow just is a matter of design and how it works is this blog called the brand new blog and they they look at as companies as Fortune 500 companies, any company, as they try to change their imagery, logos, the word marks that they use, uh, they they talk about those and what's good or bad about the changes that they're making. Very interesting and a, just a kind of a way to stay on top of the design thing. Um, yeah, now a big thing you and I have talked about in the past is photos, and people don't understand. You know, they just feel like they can go out to the internet and Google just get, gives me photos, but. Depending on what they're doing with their presentation, they could get in trouble. So talk a yeah. little bit about sources for photos and, and what you, you know, yeah. why Creative Commons and what that's okay. all about. So you can go out to Google and find all kinds of images. And even somebody who may be speaking right now may have done this from time to time <laughs> uh, as, as desperate last resort. Right. Um, but probably those photos aren't licensed for you to use in the way that you're using them. Um, I mean, ignorance of the law is is interesting, and the, the epistles speak of that. Uh, but w once we know <laughs> for sure that they are not uh, licensed in that way, uh, yeah, you could get in some uh, legal or moral trouble for that. So yes. um, be wise about where you get photos. Um, it, it, here's a few resources that are things that you can use with no problems. Uh, you could ask, of course, if you found an image on a Google image search that you wanted to use, you could ask, hey, can I, can I have this image? Can I use it for this thing? Um, but Wikimedia, yeah. anything, like as you're, if you're searching through Wikipedia articles and they had an image that goes along with that, if you click that image, usually you can find a really high quality image of that. And all of those are licensed Creative Commons use. Like you can take and, and put those in. So like, one of those pictures of Stalin, uh, both, uh, two or three of the pictures of Kim Jong-il and Kim Il-sung, that's where these things come from uh, that you saw earlier. Um, there's ways to do uh, uh, Creative Commons license search on Flickr. Uh, as you do your search, there's an advanced search feature where you can dig in and only show uh, Creative Commons licensed photos to use. There's a website called Stock Exchange uh, that I think the television that I mm -hmm. had the the one of these things is not like the other thing framed in. I believe that's where that image came from. Right. Um, and they've got all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Some of it's great. Some of it's not great. I mean, you, it really just ta does take some thinking and, and looking and, and hard work on that. And then there's paid sites. So uh, Tony, you listed iStock Photo, uh, but may I recommend um, uh, Pond5, Photodune, along with those. Yeah. There's all kinds of, of images. 
Yeah, do you have any knowledge? Can, is there any way you can give our viewers or listeners an idea of, of cost on these? Like, I went to iStock. This was after I put this on the list, and I was going to buy an image. <laughs> and I tell you, it was so expensive, I pulled out of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's that's one of the downsides of a this. Lot of, a lot of those sites, you buy credits. Mm -hmm. uh, you buy, like, 50 credits, and so some pictures are five credits and some pictures are 10 credits and, and so and so on and Republic credits are no good here. Yeah, and, <laughs> and some, depending on the size that you're getting, are going to cost more than others. So, uh, again, as, as far as it goes with costs, um, I mean, if there was something you really wanted, I guess, you know, you'd pay the, yeah. the cost for it. But, um, I, I mean, you just would want to compare these places and see. Um, and it, it's, it, it's it, kind of sad for sometimes. If you have an uh, if you have a nice SLR camera, um, sometimes you can create your. I mean, you can go out and take your own photos, you know, and, and get some high quality stuff that way as well. Now, uh, in the church, as we talk about photos, in the same breath, we've also got to talk about fonts because there are some fonts that are not licensed for the church or really? for uh, commercial use. So let me give you a resource that gathers and puts together puts together free fonts mm -hmm. for commercial use so you could go to the printers with these fonts and you're not going to run into any trouble ah. font squirrel font squirrel s-q-u-i-r-r-e-l this is where uh, i i basically have an rss feed of their website and once a week i go to each one of the new fonts that they list if i even if i don't need them right now i'm downloading them and then i have a folder in my dropbox that synchronizes across my computers of fonts. So like the, the sermon series that, that you saw slides from here from this elemental thing, that is a font that I got from Font Squirrel that I like the way it looked with the theme that what I was trying to put together and I used it. Um, wow, yeah, I'm, I'm there right now, man, oh man. It, wow, look at that. Great resource for, for fonts. Um, there are a bunch of font sites. Um, and even some free fonts are not licensed for commercial use. And I believe, I'm not an expert in the law, like I said, I have some ignorance to the law, but uh, I believe that even some free fonts um, for the church to use somebody's font and like put out some sort of publication uh, or print material that had that, that again, you could get yourself in a little bit of hot water. Um, I mean, it's probably not going to happen, but it could. And so if you have an option like Font Squirrel, Use Font Squirrel. <laughs> Download yeah. every one of those things, man. Just dig through there and pull all those things down because there, there's some great stuff. But again, there's some that's not so great. Like there are, as I'm looking through here, I'm trying to find, uh, those are all the, let's see, popular, recent. There's some fonts that like I would never, never use. Uh, mm -hmm. But there are many that I might at one point. Like here's one. Uh, it, it looks like bamboo. Um Again, I'm probably never going to use this font that looks like pieces of bamboo. I might, if I ever did a Survivor series or something like that. Right. You know, Heath, you and I, we can, we can do <laughs> the ultimate Survivor series. Uh, but, you know, anyways. Um, and so listen, I mean, time's getting away from us here. I mean, we we've act, I, mean, I didn't I didn't dream we'd take the whole hour, but we almost have, which is just fine. Um, so let me just pile on a couple things here. Some people might hear this and be a little overwhelmed and say, well, I don't even know how to make PowerPoint. If you will go to like, um, so again, if you're in PC world and PowerPoint is your only option, that's all you have, go to YouTube, search uh, power, a PowerPoint tutorial. Uh, I mean, one person has put together six lessons there, and right. they start out very elementary, do this, click that. Um, there are resource, free resources, right. same way with Keynote. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can find those and learn how to build those. And then you can, once you learn how to build slide presentations, and you can come back to this podcast and everything we have here, resources, you can then begin to layer on and build and learn more and more and just add to your knowledge base. Let's, mm. let's be blunt, though, as well, as we talk about this. Some of us are not. Like, we don't have an eye for design. Right. All right? If you don't, try to find somebody who does. Yeah. There's no guarantee that the, you know, 14 or 15-year-old high school kid who may know how to run PowerPoint has an eye for design. There's no guarantee in that. But, uh, I mean, 
<laughs> when, I, yeah. when I did an internship at a church for a while, they had a quarter time guy who one of his responsibilities was create the, the theme and the work for the pastor. This pastor, you could have sat him down in front of keynote or and PowerPoint or whatever, and it would have been a disaster. It would have been yeah. a disaster. He could have had all the training he wanted. It would have been a disaster. Um, so he had to know himself, and there's there's a part of that in all of this. Yeah. Now, part of the reason we do this show and do what we do is we want to resource people. Right. And so I would just add to what you said, Matthew, and say if you have some young person and you know they're good with the computer and you think, hey, that would be the person. Um, I mean, we, it would tickle us that if you take this podcast and let that be one that informs them. And right. and as, as, as we've already said, when we're done with this, all the resources we've talked about, we're simply going to link our listeners to, yeah. and and they can go and learn from that. And, um, and I'd, I'd be happy to share. I mean, if there's ever anything that I've done that somebody wants, I'd be happy to share it. Like I did a, we did a, um, a, a series of, through Proverbs, and we called it P thirty one X. Except instead of, you know, it was, yeah. it was, too <laughs> and I found out what kind of font found a very similar font to the P, uh, P 90 X stuff yeah. that they use. I built out my imagery. I mean, I've got, I've got slides, I've got, I've got print material, I've got bulletin covers, all that kind of stuff from, uh, you know, to do a series through Proverbs and I, I love it. So yeah. there are other places that you can go that, that give you stuff like that. I mean, there are so, yeah, I've, I've got a, I've got a whole I've got a whole section in my poor about to die Google Reader uh, that is <laughs> blogs of, of church design, yeah. uh, like NLC Creative. Uh, yeah. Man, there's so many different places yeah. that you can get and good the, ideas. And that's the main thing. If if somebody's you know listening to this, you might this might all be very overwhelming that it's too much for you. But there are literally, I mean, tens of thousands of resources that can that can help you. Uh, and even if you don't do it yourself, to find somebody in your church to, to give them a role, to help them you know, use their gifts, use their talents, use their passions. And if it speaks to how important it is, or, you, look, yeah. all right, you look at a church like um, National Community Church, Mark yeah. Patterson's church. They have, I believe, when I was up there last, it was three pastors of like design like this is right. what they this is what they did yeah you look at a church like alive here very local to us they've got guys on staff who this is their job because tom can't i mean tom tom right. tom can't keep up with all that he no. can't put all that together and do all that but it's a hugely important thing if you're going to do it you need to do it well yeah priscilla yeah. makes a good point in the chat room that above all else please proofread and don't misspell a word because oh. it, a misspelled word on the mo on, overlaid the mona lisa even makes the mona lisa look bad so <laughs> make sure you proofread uh speaking of which uh i i proofread our church sign today and have to make some corrections <laughs> to it when i get back even well i mean even even the best person's going to make a right. mistake uh, yeah. Every once in a while, I mean, and I you certainly. You just fire them. You just fire them. Let them go. Like find another <laughs> church. They can serve in. It's no problem. Just fire them. We, and move on. We love you, but you just can't work here anymore. That's right. All right. Well, listen. Let's talk about what's coming up in the future. On June the 11th, we have Luke Gilkerson with us. He is with CovenantEyes.com. Going to talk a little bit about the history of that and what that organization does in terms of trying to create account of online accountability for um, men and women. Also, on June the 18th, we have Dr. Bill Pete from Kingswood University will be our guest. I'm going to talk to him about education. He also spent uh, several years in Africa um, as a missionary, and uh, going to talk about that experience and just the integration of what he does now with the backdrop of missions. On June the 25th, two of our favorite people, Dave and Donna Tolan, are going to be in studio. Uh, unfortunately, Heath's going to be gone that yeah, week, I think, yeah, on I'm vacation. Uh, <laughs> but that, that, that's going to be fun. And then July the 9th, guess who's going to camp? We are. We are. <laughs> <laughs> and there will be even better, even better. Guess who's going to kids camp? Yeah. 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 So there will be, uh, when we return, there will be video footage of, right. of what happened at kids I'm camp. I'm sure. I'm excited. This is this is the first time in a while for kids camp for some of you guys, isn't it? I mean, I, do you remember our last kids camp show? I, I remember our last kids camp show. I got a call. You know, oh, I yeah. was knocking on my door saying, Tony can't figure something out. You need to come. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm with a cabin full of kids. I can't do it. 
Uh, uh, the panic, panic. So, yeah, no show on July the 9th. We'll be at camp, and as Heath said, we'll bring you all the exploits on July <laughs> yes. the 16th. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. Uh, um, what's your name? Heath, yeah. Where, where can our listeners find you on the Internet? Yeah, and go to heathmelican.com. Don't forget, technologyshow.com slash giveaway theologian trading cards. There's blank ones you can add us on to your, you to sure your deck. You sure can. You can also find those at our Facebook page. Uh, if you go there, you can find the giveaway is what yes. I'm saying. It's also posted there. Find me at matthewtg.com. Uh, it has links to uh, everywhere that I am on the Internet. And Tony? All right, if you want to do any further, oh, excuse me, you can find me at fa Facebook or Twitter at AKC64. And as I was going to say, if you want to do further research on anything we discussed today, you can find all the links to the stories we covered at our website, thetechnologyshow.com. If you want to contact us, send your emails to thetechnologyshow at gmail.com, or better yet, make Matthew's day and call 30. 49 Theology. That's 304 986 5649. Leave us a message and we may even play your comments on the air. Hey guys, I'll be back uh, in South Carolina by Thursday morning. Um, hold down the fort there. And to all of our listeners, as always, uh, thanks for joining us. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Adios. Yay.